What's up my people? It's Kwame, the neighborhood neuroscientist, aka the Hood Neuro, here to talk to you today about alcohol. Alcohol has been in the news lately, hasn't it? I want to talk to you today about some things that alcohol does and some things that alcohol does not do. First, you've all stumbled around a little bit when you've been drinking, right? Uh, that's due to ethanol's action on the cerebellum, which is the little brain in the back of your head uh, that coordinates action, uh, motor action, and thought. Uh, alcohol, or ethanol as we like to call it in pharmacological circles, right, uh, tends to depress or lower activity in certain circuits in the cerebellum. Same thing with frontal lobes. We call alcohol a depressant, not because it makes you depressed, although use, overuse of it uh, over time can be associated with depression. Not because it makes you depressed though, that's not why we call it a depressant. It lowers activity of certain circuits in the frontal lobes responsible for regulating our actions. Alcohol also facilitates the release of dopamine. And by that I mean it helps release a neurotransmitter called dopamine, a chemical in the brain that is associated with pleasure. It causes us to feel pleasure. Uh, it also helps us learn and it is associated with how we process receiving rewards. Now, alcohol doesn't act in a vacuum. It acts as part of our social interactions. In fact, in college alcohol is used a lot to lubricate social interactions. Think about it, a lot of people are at home, away from home for the first time, around people they've never met. So alcohol is used to sort of ease that social interaction and it can go away wrong, right? Uh, we can drink too much, we can get sick, uh, we can stumble around, we can pass out. Here's what alcohol does not do. Alcohol does not cause rape. Now, because alcohol lowers inhibitions, if you are already a person that looked at women deep down as a conduit to your own sexual pleasure or as something or someone to be subjugated, then yes, alcohol makes you more likely to rape someone. You did that because you want power over somebody or maybe you weren't feeling good about yourself and you wanted to use this woman's body as a conduit to feel better about yourself, to feel more powerful the whole night, to feel like a real man. But that's not a real man, homie. And alcohol didn't make you do that. Okay? You did that because of your internal attitudes and the attitudes of the society you were raised in that look at women as objects. That look at other people as objects because, hello, men get raped too. So this has been a little bit about alcohol and, and, and listen, we also have to consider the fact that there's two sources of dopamine release here, two sources of reward. There's the things that as men that we do and that we get egged on to do because we're men, you have lots of sex with lots of women, right? And if you do, or even if you say you do, you get rewarded by positive feedback from your peers, right? Dopamine release. You couple that with alcohol, dopamine release. You get a little wild and crazy at a party, that gets positively reinforced. Dopamine release. The release of inhibitions, the increase in response to reward, right? And the attitudes that we share about one another. All that stuff interacts to create rape. But alcohol doesn't cause rape. You already had a problem. If you rape somebody, you already had a problem. And that's what we need to solve. Till next time, this has been your boy Kwame, the Neighborhood Neuroscientist, aka the Hood Neuro. I hope you take these words that I'm giving you and give them a little bit of thought today. Peace.